section. Over here, SPSS gives you the option of residuals in the cell display. In the cells option, it gives you adjusted standardized residuals. And those residuals are basically Z scores. And if there are Z scores that are greater than 1.96, then they are statistically significant. Now I'll click on the percentages as well, row percentages, because I want to see how the percentages break out in the contingency table analysis. So let's look at these estimates. Now SPSS has produced the same Pearson chi-square value, because I, I selected that in the first example, or the first run-through. Now the important bit here is the cross-tabulation, or the contingency table. And we can see that there are percentages here. And the main element here, I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with contingency table analysis already. This is more a post hoc type of video. But we can see that in upper class socioeconomic status, if we just look at upper class across science, social science, and arts, we can see that 11% of the science students are from upper class socioeconomic uh, class. And arts is as much as 52.8. So 52.8% is a lot more than 11%. So 52.8% of students enrolled in arts are from upper socioeconomic class status, whereas science is only 11.1%. These are just fictitious data. Uh, but the question is, are these deviant? Where are, where's the significant pattern emerging? And where you get the answer to that question is by looking at these adjusted residuals. Now I mentioned these residuals are Z scores. And an absolute Z, Z score above 1.96 is statistically significant, or it's beyond a chance of 0 0.05. And in this case, we can see that the adjusted residual for arts is equal to 4.2, and that corresponds to the percentage here of 52.8. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means that this cell is statistically significantly different. This percentage of 52.8 is statistically significantly different from the null, null uh, hypothesis expectation of 33.3% uh, if it was completely equal across all three uh, majors, but it's not. And we can see that this 31% has a very small adjusted residual. And that's what you'd expect, because the null hypothesis is 33% in this case, which is very similar to this value of 31. The 11% is statistically significant as well. And so you can see that each cell has an adjusted uh, z-score residual. And you just have to find the one that's equal to 1. You just have to find those that are greater than 1.96. And then those are statistically significant. Now, you have to bear in mind that you've done a whole series of analyses and there is the chance of doing of committing a type 1 error in this case and so you'd have to apply some kind of correction associated with each one of these uh, cell analyses and what you can do uh, to uh, perform this analysis and I suppose the other drawback with just looking at the z-score residuals the adjusted residuals is that you don't have a p-value with them. You just know statistically that beyond 1.96, uh, be, yeah, beyond 1.96 is statistically significant. But ideally, when you report your results, you'd have a p-value associated with each one of your analyses. And I'll show you how to get a p-value in this case uh, in a relatively simple way. What I've done is I've inputted all the adjusted z-scores into a column in SPSS. So this negative 4.32 is uh, this value here, negative 4.3. Now, you don't actually see all the decimal places here, but you'd have to adjust it to get all the decimal places. I want those z-scores at two decimal places, because I'm actually going to do some computations on them. And to do that, you just have to go into that section and apply. So that's how I ended up, that's how you change the cell values. So I've got negative 4.32 as my adjusted z-score residual, and that's over here. Then I have 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0
uh, which is from here, 0.61, and then 4.22. So I've